So just uh, last week, I saw an advertisement for a program on, I think it's on Netflix, uh, but it's a series which follows the very challenging and difficult story of extremely rich people who don't know what to do with their money. So uh, these guys, they have Lamborghinis and Ferraris, and they have this, you know, it's, it's heart-wrenching, it's gut-wrenching to see the, the, what they suffer, the poor things, but they try to make them go even faster, you know? So they put like, you know, sports tires, on, or even sportier tires on and make, try to make them even lighter, uh, try to put on bigger turbochargers, and then on occasion the engines will explode, and it's, you know, it's heartbreaking, the poor things. Um, and so, you, you know, they give you a tour of their garage, and yeah, so here this is a 1940s Ferrari, which I bought for 14 million euro there last week, and uh, dollars even, and here's a Murcielago, which I tuned, this one goes up to, you know, 1,600 horsepower, yeah, yeah, and so on and so forth. And, and it's just interesting to see how, for some people, like, uh, these, these kind of things, these kind of challenges, these kind of goals become so, so important, right? So getting this car up to 1,200 horsepower or getting it, you know, sub eight seconds in a quarter mile drag race, um, th these, th these kind of goals become super important. And the interesting thing is once they have achieved that goal, then what? Then, then, then what like? So you've, you know, you've put in, you've spent actually millions of dollars to get here. Now you have a car that can, that can do the quarter mile in less than eight seconds. Now, now what? And you can apply this to kind of any goal that we might have, you know, whether it be to have a certain amount of status, money, uh, a certain position at work, a certain car, a certain house, live in a certain place, whatever it may be, any of those kind of ideas. Once we get there, then what? Then is, is, is this it? Like, is, is, is this what it's all about? Is this as... Uh, this, this idea, this dream that I've had, now that it's realized, what now? Where, where, to, where to from here? What's, what's the next goal or challenge? And it's just very, very interesting to see how, how ultimately unsatisfying the fulfillment even of those dreams is. They get there and it's fantastic and the champagne and, pss, and everything is everything is amazing. Grand, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a month later, a month later, then, then, then what like? So, like what St. Augustine says, you've made us for yourself, O oh Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. That is just so true. It's so true. Unless we have God, there, there's, there's no ultimate deeper meaning to anything. You know, you, you, you achieve a certain goal here, and that, that's it. That, that was the end in itself. Whereas for us, from a Catholic perspective, Everything, everything, there are, there are kind of minor goals which all serve the major goal, the major goal being heaven. And all these other things serve, serve that. Whatever, in, insignificant as they may appear to be, all of the, the, the daily work, the daily challenges, daily joys, uh, everything in our daily joys, we thank God. Why? Because we believe he's the source of all good things. We believe that's who we want to be with for all eternity in heaven. When a cross comes our way, we unite this to the sufferings of Jesus. Why? Because that's where we want to be for all eternity, with, with Jesus in heaven. So joys, our sufferings, everything, career, happiness, sadness, health, illness, everything should lead us to heaven. So there's, 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 a, there's a, a much greater goal in all of this. When we think of, of today's gospel, the, the parable of the sower. Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some of the seed fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Now, very briefly, the Lord himself explains this parable, and he says that the birds of the air that come to eat up the word are Satan and his angels. So this parable isn't about feeding the birds. That's for Mary Poppins. Um, this is about something much deeper, right? So the, the birds of the air that come down and eat up the seed, that's that's they're the demons taking away this word. So you may have heard, you may have been on, on a pilgrimage, you may have been, been to mass, you may have heard scripture proclaimed at some point, and you listen to it and go, yeah, that's, it's, that's nice. I mean, I, I agree with it. No way I'm following it, though. No way. That's just too hard or impossible. Or No, not a hope. Not a hope. Okay. Others fell in patches of rock where they found little soil and sprang up straight away, but no depth of earth. So as soon as the sun comes out, not having any roots, they dry up. So this is the initial enthusiasm or conversion 
experience. You know, when after conversion, like, this is great, I just want to convert everyone. This is fantastic. I want everyone to be Catholic. And, and, and then someone says, but then that might mean then that the way you used to live, the way you used to socialize, the way you used to drink, you can't really do that anymore. Oh, that's, that's different then, isn't it? All right. I thought this whole religion thing was like, this is the fun bit, you know, the, the, the happy clappy bit, the, the youth group bit, and the, you know, being part of something, and the, you know, going up mountains and praying. I thought, that, that, that's the bit I like. You mean, I, I, can't, I can't do all these things I used to do? No, you, you can't do both. It doesn't, it doesn't work like. Either you decide to walk with the Lord or, or you don't. You can't half walk with him. All right. And then having little soil, out comes the sun, and they wither away. Then there are those that fall among the thorns. So again, the, 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 the seed sprouts up, but then the worries and concerns. What will people think? What will people think if they see me going to Mass? What if, what if, I, if, I, if I stop going to these drinking sessions, or what if I stop watching these movies, or what if when they're all talking about how bad the church is, what if I don't chip in in that conversation? What will people think of me? What if I don't fit in anymore because of my faith? No, no, no. If I, if I follow the Lord, I'm going to be alone. I'm going to be the only, like the only one I know doing this, so no. No, no, no. And then the concerns of the world stifle and choke newly sprung seed, and no, 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 I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. It's, I'm, I'm just too worried. In German, they have a, a great word for it, mention for it, fear of people. So fear of what people will think. You know, you're constantly kind of watching, what, you know, will, will people agree with me, disagree with me? Will people like me if I do this? Will people dislike me if I do this? Will, how will this affect my career? How will this affect my job prospects? And just constantly fearful of what people might say or think. That's, that's what this is describing. These days, as a Catholic, <laughs> you have every, you have, you are completely right. You are absolutely justified in believing that things are going to be slightly difficult if you're overtly Catholic in today's world. There will be an awful lot of thorns trying to, trying to choke that, that faith because there will be an awful lot of people who disagree. So, okay. And lastly, and this is the, the interesting one. Others fell on rich soil and produced, produced their crops, some a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. Now, the Lord is saying this and knows, obviously, he, he, he describes, explains this parable later. So he knows he's the sower. Right? So here he is, and he's proclaiming the word of God. So proclaiming how we're supposed to live, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to pray, how we're supposed to address God as our father, uh, how we're supposed to balance the law and love together. It's not all law, law with no love just becomes a dictatorship. Love with no law just becomes do whatever you want. It just becomes a completely lax society. So it's how to balance law and love, how to keep these two together, how to have authority and yet serve, how to be in a position of responsibility yet die as such for those under your care. So the, the Lord is sticking all sorts of things together that don't normally stick. He's showing us how to live. He's the one sowing, and he knows that he's not going to be successful all the time. Imagine, like, if you're God, you're God, and you know you're not going to be successful, not because you're not powerful enough, but because what you're doing is offering people another way to live, a better way to live. But in order for them to, to, to do this, they must simply accept the gift, and that's something that you can't take control over. You can't take control over their free will, otherwise they're not free to love. They're not free to choose to follow you. They're not free to choose, as we sang in our, in our opening song, today I choose to follow you. If they're not free, then they can't choose. If they can't choose, they can't love. It's just this, this dilemma, if you will, this divine dilemma. He gives us freedom, but with that freedom, we can choose to reject him. But for the Lord, as such, it's worth it if there are some who bear a hundredfold or sixty or thirtyfold. If it wasn't for that, the whole thing is wasted. Like, why, why, just why bother? Why bother? But for, for, for these for whom, for these who receive the Lord, for whom the Lord is enough, they can actually bear a hundredfold, sixty, thirty. So who are you? 
in this parable, who are you? I would imagine many of us, we want to be the rich soil. We want to be the rich soil that the seed falls on and bears maybe not a hundredfold, maybe we could let's, can we aim for 60, aim for 60, 65. 30 is a bit, uh, if you aim too low and you miss it, then you fail. So aim kind of middle, if you miss it, you end up okay. Aim, aim, let's aim high, let's aim high. If we miss it, then we end up in the middle, which is pretty good. Okay, so what do we, we want to be the ones who, who, who bear a hundredfold fruit. What does that require? The Lord tells us in, in the Gospel of St. John, the seed falls into the earth, unless the seed falls into the earth and dies, it remains but a single seed. But if it dies, it bears fruit. Hundredfold, sixty, thirty. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that you have to just simply die, because that's neither virtuous nor unvirtuous. That's just a medical fact. Uh, but it means die to oneself, die to one's will, die to one's passions, die to laziness, sin, pride, die to your own such knee wants in a marriage situation, for example, learning how to not always have things exactly as you want, when you want, how you want, all the time, because that's the, you just become impossible and insufferable to live with. But how to how to compromise in the good sense, never on moral things, but how to come to an agreement on things that that aren't important, that aren't so important. Where do we go on holidays? Wherever you want, love. <laughs> you know those kind of things. Just how how to how to work with other people, how to renounce your own will. When you're tired, that you still serve. When, you, when you're hungry, that you still feed the kids at the table first. When, you know, all of those daily things that, that, that happen in a family that give us the opportunity to transform our lives into lives of love. And all of those opportunities to die to oneself in favor of love of another. And that's, that's how we do this. That's how we become that rich soil that, that, that bears fruit 100-fold, 60-fold, 30. It's not just uh, wanting it, just wishing it doesn't make it happen. It's very, very practical. United with the Lord, i.e. through prayer, we have the grace then to serve even when it hurts, to give even when we feel we've got nothing, to give without counting the cost. And this then gives everything that we do in our lives meaning. Far more than tuning a stupid car to go fast, to a tenth of a second faster than my billionaire neighbor. Who cares? Who cares? Living life like this, with this mentality, it gives everything meaning, which means it makes every aspect of our life meaningful and therefore joyful. Even if things aren't seen, I know that God sees. What a, what, a, what a beautiful way to live, what a beautiful existence to have here, that my life, every aspect of my life, every minute of my life actually makes a difference. And so we ask the Lord today to help us to see the opportunities that he will provide, that his providence will provide for us, to bear fruit in our families, in our society, in our community, in our places of work, that we may have eyes to see these opportunities and ears to hear his word. Amen.